Okay, good afternoon, everybody. And it's the first fertility talk on Facebook um, for 2022. So thank you, everyone who's going to join. I think this is, we, everyone's just getting the notifications now to join fertility talk for, first fertility talk for 2022. So thank you, everyone's going to join us today. Today we are talking to Bath, and Bath is a reproductive, is a in embryologist. Embryologist. Embryologist, yes, um, and you from Repro Lab. So, thank you very much for joining us this morning, this afternoon. Um, we really appreciate your time you take out because obviously you've got patients to take care of as well. Um, and the role of an embryologist is always very important, and I think you guys are, are very much overlooked um, because. You know, we're always saying, you know, fertility specialists are great um, and, you know, they, they, they're they the ones that do everything, but you guys are actually the ones that make sure that you have the perfect egg and everything is going perfect behind the scenes so we don't really get to see you guys and what you are doing. Um, but Bath, please introduce yourself. Please let us know where you're from, what it is that you do, um, why you got into doing what you do. Thank you, Lian, and thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Bharat Tambwe. I'm originally from the Democratic Republic of Congo, known as DRC. I've been living in South Africa for almost the past 20 years. I got my degree in agri-science back home in Lubumbashi. And in South Africa, I went to University of Stellenbosch, where I obtained my MPhil degree in assisted reproduction. From there, I approached uh, Dr. Aeditas Fertility Clinic, where I did my training to become an embryologist. And I further did my training at Fertility Clinic for about six months, and then got qualified. And for the first time, I practiced as an independent embryologist at Stemba Fertility Center. It's here in Rastember, just one street behind me with Dr. H.M. Martin. And from there, the rest is history. Yeah. Mm. So, so if I may ask you a quick question, it's, um, so you've got the embryologist, um, you, that is what you do, like you, a repo lab, right? Repro lab. Yeah. Um, but do you actually do, do you work in, with, combined with another doctor, with a IVF specialist? Um, what, what is it that you guys do? Can you just come to you if you've got male problems? What is it? Okay, Reprolab stands, it's short for Reproductive Laboratory. We are an andrology lab and we also offer IVF services. And we don't do all ourselves. We are in partnership with doctors. And our head office is based at UNITAS in Centurion. And we run a repro lab within Family Matters Fertility Clinic, which is owned by Dr. Q. Diale. Here in Rastebek, currently, I'm in Femke Fertility Clinic, which is the lab owned by Dr. Pieter. And right at the end, we have another clinic owned by Dr. H. M. Moati. So we are in partnership with all these doctors. They are fertility specialists. So we also work with gynees with GPs, with urologists. Mostly they refer to us male that they have problems so that we can investigate. But also when we are within the lab where we can bring the egg and the sperm together, we work with other specialists specialists to be able to offer our services to them. Okay, That's what perfect. we do. Perfect, thank you very much for that. So we're gonna get straight into it today. We're talking about male infertility and how it's defined. So what is male infertility? Okay. Male infertility or infertility in general is defined as inability to conceive. It's a disease, WHO defines infertility as uh, inability to conceive, okay? Or to produce a pregnancy after six months if the couple is old or 12 months of unprotected and irregular intercourse. So here, there is no prevention and the intercourse is happening on a regular basis, but still the outcome is poor, there is no pregnancy. So after this period of six to 12 months, then the couple need to be aware that there is a problem of infertility 
and they need to approach fertility people to be able to assist them. Okay, but and, and male infertility itself, how um, is male infertility a common thing? Okay, uh, male infertility, infertility can be, there's quite a variety of factors. We have a lot of factors that can impact on male fertility, but let me bring maybe two or three factors that are easy to everyone to pick up. The first one, we can consider the delivery of sperm, for example. So during intercourse, men have erection, and then when it gets to the time of orgasm, semen is released. Because there is, the penis is erected, the semen will be dropped deep in the vagina, closer to the cervix. And then from there, the sperm are going to invade and then go into the womb, do what they do best. So if, for example, we have a situation of uh, impotence or erectile dysfunction, where the erect erection is not strong enough or it's come and go, definitely during intercourse, this man can still reach for gas, but the sperm is not going to be deposited deep in the vagina. It should be kind of uh, close to outside of the vagina. Already this is a problem because sperm now have a long way to travel from wherever they are dropped to go through the cervix, in the uterus, and through the tubes, hopefully they meet the egg there. That can be first problem that can cause infertility. The second one can be an abnormality of the penis, for example. We have the condition that we call hypospadias. is where the opening of the penis, instead of being on the tip of the penis, is on the side. And in this case, the penis has curvatures that and in this situation, the intercourse itself becomes painful and undesirable. We have another situation like retrograde ejaculation, whereby instead of semen, the whole production of semen, the ejaculation is an integrated movement where sperm goes from the bed forward. But we have a situation, instead of coming out, the sperm goes back into the blood and get mixed with urine, which is Okay, I don't know what happened to, to Doc. Um, okay, we'll just give him a couple of minutes for him to go back online. I think he's just, um, he's lost connection there or something. Okay, let's see. Example, Here we go, he's back. Yeah, Sorry, you. You, we, we must... lost connection with you for a couple of seconds. You're back. Oh, okay. Um, Another food parameter? Okay, you can go ahead on this thing. No, 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 you can finish off your last one. Okay, another parameter can be premature ejaculation. This is where a man gets aroused and release semen earlier than expected, sometimes before even the intercourse takes place. So the availability of the semen in this instance is not properly done. So now let's assume all is okay with the delivery of sperm but now we need to look also into the quality of the material that is being delivered yes. there we are in a situation for example where we have little sperm or no sperm at all which we call azospermia we may have also a situation where sperm are not moving properly because if you see the whole movement semen is ejaculated in the vagina then sperm need to swim, go through the cervix, in the womb, in the fallopian tube, where they will be meeting the egg and hopefully they fertilize. But if the sperm is not moving, already even when the egg is available, there is no sperm present to fertilize it. So this can be another cause of infertility. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, how is... Okay, sorry. Um, how is it assessed? So how do you do, what type of test is done to determine, you know, um, the quality of the sperm and, and so forth? Okay, that will be already at the advanced stage. Let me maybe start from the beginning. Let's say you have this boy child who is nine to 12 months. It comes to parent just to check the testicle and making sure that the two testicles has descended and they attend to the escrotum. 
Sometimes one, for one testicle doesn't descend and is still within the abdominal, abdominal, uh, abdominal cavity. And that makes sure this testicle is overheated and it's impaired to do its firm function. Yeah. When a child boy is, for example, around 15 years, 15 years old, when he's taking a bath, just check that your testicles are okay, that they are smooth into the scrotum, that they are firm, but they are not hard, that there is no lamps, okay? But now, when we are getting at the reproductive age, where we are involved in a relationship and we want a child and the child is not coming, we, the first thing we are referred to fertility specialists, and then they are going to bring a male partner to the andrology lab where the men will go into the room. We're going to give uh, about two to five days of abstinence. We give the container and it goes in the room where the samples produced by masturbation. Make sure that we receive the entire production in the container, it's given to us. Then we're going to check that semen. We're going to check for how many sperm are in, how many sperm are moving, for how long do the sperm survive, we also check the morphology, which is the shape of the sperm. And we compare these parameters against the HW, WHO parameters. If your values are equal or above, then sperm is normal. But if the values are below, then we are having a problem. We also have a situation where men can produce good quality sperm in terms of quantities and movement, but still, there is no pregnancy. There is this thing called varicocele, which is a vein that uh, passes through the scrotum and on top of testicles. And sometimes it becomes, it's, it's enlarged and we have a lot of blood there, which can also affect on the sperm quality. So these are the things that we assess and we give a report to the patient and the way forward. But the hope is there that whatever is the situation, as long as we have sperm, we have a lot of technologies that can be applied to be able to help such people. Okay, perfect. Um, what causes male infertility? Okay, we have quite a lot of factors. For example, abnormality in the sperm. If men doesn't produce enough sperm, you need about 15 million sperm and up for the count to be normal. So if we are below, it might be a genetic problem. It might be a hormonal problem. Uh, it might be that uh, there is a deficiency in hormones that are responsible for sperm production. But also lifestyle is very important. Yeah. People that are obese, for example, they have serious problems when it comes to sperm quality. What you eat, actually semen itself, it's a... It shows the health or the health status of men's life. So do sport, be active, eat healthy, avoid a lot of junk food, avoid alcohol, avoid uh, smoking or drugs. Most of people are into bodybuilding. Also, they have a testosterone problem that can affect this uh, quality. Yeah. Okay, great. And what can be done to improve? But I think you, you almost answered that now um, about, yeah, um, sorry, it, it's about living healthy and especially, you know, the drug problem, the, the alcohol, smoking, those type of things. Um, so I don't think I'm going to ask that one now. But what is the psychological impact of male infertility? So that is quite a big one because um, it, it, I feel that men actually feel that they're not a man, you know, I'm not man enough if, if, if I can't produce sperm or do a normal thing as like, you know, have a, impregnate my wife, my partner. Yeah, I yeah we've, we've been in this field quite for a number of years now. And what we come to see is men identify themselves with the sperm. Once you tell a man there is no sperm or sperm is poor, they don't feel, men don't feel that they are many enough because they are not able to fulfill this, uh, uh, this gender mission of saying one day as a man, you should be able to impregnate a woman. And if that doesn't happen, so we have quite a lot of problems that are uh, uh, psychological. There is a turmoil, there is anxiety, there is a sense of uh, hopelessness, 
of blame, of guilt, sense of wealth, wealthlessness, of failure. And uh, it brings also quite a lot of problems, even in the relationship, mostly also into the romantic life with the partner. And you know, when we do this type of treatment, we check patient, we have the case where we say, okay, when last did you have sex? How often do you guys have sex? And these are quite uh, private matters. And yeah. once they must bring these matters out, they kind of feel being violated. And uh, for a couple that come, for example, for fetish treatment, when, for example, one round fail, there's this sense of loss, there's this sense of, uh, of guilt, and it, it, it's quite a serious problem, definitely. It's quite a serious problem. Yeah. But what we want people to know is there is always help out there and we can assist them. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you that now. Like, I, it's not part of my questions, but I was going to ask you, what do you say if your partner um, is, is, first of all, what do you, how do you try to get him, first of all, to come and have himself tested? That is a big thing. And then what do you say after you receive the results and they find out that it's on the male side? What, what would you um, recommend someone, you know, what would you say to, to your partner? Okay, men must keep down. We are human beings and the problem may always happen. And if your result come out and the value of your semen is below, we have a lot of technique that can be used. For instance, if the man ejaculate and there is no sperm in his semen, this is a situation we call azospermia. We can do the hormonal test to check the FSH levels, the testosterone, and this can indicate to us whether there is a sperm into his testis. And we can go with needles into the testis, aspirate the tubules out, open up them, and we can still get sperm and fertilize the eggs. And we have the babies that are walking with two feet and who from not uh, being able to ejaculate sperm we yeah. were able to help. So there is always a hope out there. Okay, that is There's actually- There's always a help, sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's actually great news for, for men because um, I think they would feel as if, you know, there's nothing that they can do. It's over. I've got, especially when they get the results of they've got no sperm. Um, so that is great to know that there is still there quite a lot that they can do um, on the male side. So thank you very much, Path. If anybody wants to get hold of Path, um, Path, could you maybe just drop your email address, some contact details? So if anyone wants to contact you. Okay, whoever wants to contact us, we can get us on reprolab at reprolab.co.za. That is our email address. And the website, we are on www.reprolab.co.za. You can find us on Facebook as well as on Instagram as well. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much for your time today. And um, we hope to chat to you again soon. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. We really appreciate the opportunity. God it's bless. a pleasure. And we'll see everyone again. Thanks, everyone, for joining us today. So today we were with Paul, and he is an embryologist at Repro Lab. And they are out. I think they, they work with a some fertility specialist in the area. Um, I know you guys are in Gauteng in the other area as well. Yes, we are also in Kempton Park, Van Riebeck Park, with Dr. Andre Ekman at ART Lab. We are in Centurion at uh, Unitas Hospital with Dr. Q Diale. Right now, I'm in Rustenburg in Femke Fertility Clinic with Dr. Pieter, and just behind me, with Dr. we have Dr. H.M. Moazzi. So these are our strong partners. Okay, great stuff. So there you guys, yeah, if you have, if there's any male fertility, I mean, uh, male fertility issues or, or you you got a feeling that there is, please go and contact Path and he's at reprolab.co.za. So thank you, very much. Um, thank you very much. See you guys next week. See you on Wednesday evening as well over on Instagram. Have a great evening. Have a great afternoon. Thanks, guys. Bye. Sure. Bye-bye.